All right, welcome to part four. So we're gonna continue digging deeper and deeper into the API resolution here, um, peeling back those uh, layers of that onion. Okay, so where we left off then is uh, we essentially just talked real basic here. At the beginning of this function, there's a little bit of recursion in order to load two APIs that it needs for later functionality, later capability. One is LDR load DLL, the other is LDR get procedure address. So it makes sense that we're looking at a chunk of code that is gonna resolve imports and load libraries, uh, that that's what it needs to do. Now, after these initial checks, we'll enter into this first basic block. And there's a couple things that happen here that maybe aren't directly obvious. Some of you that are familiar with the PEB, the process environment block, well, you might be thinking, yeah, that's at the FS register at an offset of 30 hex. And that's true. But when you look at this code, you look at EAX, you'll see, you don't see 30 hex directly referenced. And the reason that that is, is because it's computed, right? And this is a technique just to throw off a little bit of detection, right? YAR rules and other things that can say, hey, it looks like the PEB's being accessed. Therefore, you can expect maybe some anti-analysis because there are structures in the PEB that can be used for anti-analysis. Or in this context, it's being used to for runtime linking. Now, um, you could try to figure this out if you wanted to. Uh, EAX is, read, is XORed with itself, so it's zeroed out, it's incremented, it's shifted. That's like multiplying by two. LEA is used in order to, um, uh, to not load an effective address, but it can also be used for basic arithmetic. So whatever the value in EAX is plus 10 hex, uh, that finally will result in 30 hex. I also already have a debugger open. And if we want to, here is our next, or the sequence of instructions that we were just talking about. We can see after that last LEA instruction, EAX is now contains a value of 30 hex, right? Um, I point this out just because you're going to see this technique used throughout the, the program here. That is to compute an offset or compute, compute some constant value instead of just using it it computes it to make it a little bit harder to identify. Now, what happens next is that the process environment block or the PEB structure is moved into the EAX register. And this happens to be one of those structures that um, you will start to recognize the offsets being used, very similar to when we talk about this basic block here. You'll, you'll recognize the offsets being used and you'll be able to go, oh, uh, plus C hex, plus C hex. Well, I know that that probably means that at in EAX and in, con in context with the FS register uh, that we're dealing with the PEB structure. And maybe even more importantly, you can start to recognize uh, exactly what those structures are. Now, if you look over in the pseudocode view, you'll see that um, Ida has already said that, hey, uh, this thing right here, this value that now is in EAX is the, the PEB, the PEB structure. Um, and in addition to that, navigating, right, we see that after this is moved into EAX, EAX plus C hex, that's going to be an offset from the base of that structure. So it's going to access another member that's moved into EAX. And then from there, EAX plus another offset from that structure of C hex is the address of that is moved into ECX. So what this is showing then is that from that PEB, we are navigating a couple of structures here. And so in the, you know, the pseudocode view, it's, it's, I think a little bit easier to maybe understand. Um, it doesn't though, by default update here in our disassembly. And sometimes in the disassembly view, it can be equally important to be able to annotate or to analyze those. Uh, so there's a number of ways in which you can start to explore those structures. Um, one way that I do it, and oftentimes why I end up just debugging in WinDebug, is there is a DT command, and then Microsoft has all of the symbols loaded for us already. So DT and then underscore PEB, and you can see that'll give us the structure definition for the PEB. And so add an offset of C, right? Because if we go back and look at our code, this is now going to move into EAX, the base of the PEB structure. This is saying at the base of that structure, at an offset of C hex, move that into EAX. So we're, we're walking that structure, and at an offset of C hex is this structure right here, PEB loader data. Okay, 
that's where Ida came up with this LDR. Okay, if we want to see that next structure, we can say uh, PEB LDR data. And the reason that we would do that is because now at this offset, EAX, now we're at the base of that PEB loader data structure and we're moving at an offset of C. Um, we're actually moving the address because this is going to provide the address, LEA, load effective address of that member. So that's going to get moved into ECX. You'll also notice, right, that this right here, EAX, same base of that structure at an offset of C hex, but it's a move into ECX instead of an LEA. So this is going to give us a pointer. This is going to give us the actual value that that member contains. So if we go back to look at our symbols, you'll see that at an offset of C hex. So what you'll see then here is that this is the head of a doubly linked list. And we can actually explore that as well by looking at list entry items. See the forward link and the backward link. And what that's going to point to, it's a little hard to see here, uh, but that's going to point to an LDR data table uh, entry item. And this is the important structure because this will contain, amongst other things, the next links to walk this doubly linked list of LDR data table structures that contain information about the DLLs loaded in memory, such as the base address, the entry point, uh, the base DLL name, and the full DLL name. Right, so this is this is what's allowing the code then using this internal structure to find those DLLs loaded in memory, such as NTDLL or kernel 32, and begin to look for and resolve the functionality that it desires. It has the ability to find the base, and once it finds the base address, that is the address that it's at in memory, it can walk the export table and you know, figure out the names of those exports to compute the checksum values. Um, one other thing that's kind of handy with WinDebug is that as we're stepping through this code, okay, so you can see we're at the, the the yellow highlighted line, that's the base of the PEB structure, that gets moved into EAX, okay, that gives us our, scroll back here because it should be in history, that should give us our PEB loader data, and then if we step over one more time, if we uh, see this LEA into ECX, that's going to be the first pointer to one of these structures right here, LDR data table entry. Uh, now, I don't wanna get this video to be too long, but something to keep in mind is that you'll notice this inload order module list, right? At an offset of C, it accessed the forward link based off of this list entry item. That means that this member right here is eight bytes. That's why if you added C to eight, you'd get 14 hex. And if we dereference the first four bytes, we actually get the forward link, right? Um, these members or these these you know uh, link list structures, there's in load order, there's in memory order, and there's in initialization order. And if you look at the LDR data table entry, like they are in that same order. Now, in load order is going to point to in load order. Right, so if you're following the forward links from these, you're always going to land at the base of this structure. If you're following the forward links from in memory order, you're going to land at this structure eight bytes from the base at an offset of plus eight. If you follow the in initialization order, very similar, you're going to land at this very important structure, but at an offset of 10 hex. And so when in load order is used, you don't really have to think much about it, right? The forward link will take you to the base of the structure and then everything that is anything important like the base uh, or the, 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 the name is all relevant to the base. If we come here though from something like in memory order, we're at an offset of eight, which means that from this location to get to say the, the DLL base, it isn't at an offset of 18 anymore. It's at an offset of 10, 10 hex, right? Because we're already eight bytes into the structure. So not all your malware will use the same lists here in order to navigate these structures. And depending on if they use the second or third, the in memory order or in initialization order, that will throw off where you're referencing this 
LDR data table entry, therefore throwing off your offsets. Okay, so you just need to be very, very, very aware of that. Um, okay, so now um, what that allows us to do uh, to look at is, you know, e ECX is essentially now a pointer to the beginning of that that list entry structure. So it's going to be a pointer um, that will then contain the address to the first LDR data table structure. So if we want to look at that first LDR data table structure properly populated, um, we could we could dereference ECX, or because the value is going to be moved into ECX here, as we talked about just a few minutes ago, uh, we can just see what's in ECX. And now we can use the DT command to say LDR uh, data table entry and the ECX register. And now all of the content is actually mapped in memory into the structure for us. So it's not only going to show us, you know, the, 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 you know, the forward links and backward links for these doubly linked lists, but also the DLL base and the base name and the full name, for example, base name being the name of our binary right now, full DLL name, the full path. And uh, of course this DLL base does in fact match with the DLL base or the image base here for this current execution. So the decompiler, the pseudocode results here are look very good, right? This is a pointer to the in load order module list. Yes, that's true. And this is the actual forward link from that list. As you, as you highlight now, you can see the code that we just analyzed matches up. Uh, if we want to also do this in the disassembly listing though, then what we can do is go to view and open our structures view. And now we want to add a struct type. We'll add a standard structure. And we can just add these in order. So I'm just going to start typing. You see there's the peb. So we can add that. And then we want to add struct type, add standard structure, uh, peb LDR. There's that one. Okay, add struct type, add standard structure, um, LDR data. Okay, there we go. Um, they haven't shown up here, but I have added them. And now what you can do is you go back to the disassembly listing and you can right click. Oops, sorry about that. You can right click and go to structure offset. Okay, and we know that that is the LDR structure from the PEB. Okay, from here, same thing. That is the, from the PEB LDR data structure, it is the in load order module list and it is the forward link which means we could also update var8 to say that this is a pointer to the in load uh, load order module list. Keep the name, similar convention here to the pseudocode. Um, and then this, this is the same structure, except this now contains the value. Okay, what happens next is that we want to look at uh, ECX. We know what ECX is. ECX is the PEB loader data table structure. We're at the base of the structure because it used the in load order module list forward link. Now we can go ahead and structure offset. And our last option here is the LDR data table entry DLL base. Okay, so now we move into EBX, the DLL base. And you'll notice that that's used quite a bit here throughout the rest of this function. Sometimes changing things in IDA uh, has unexpected results. And uh, just before this, uh, this was kind of a wrong, a wrong value uh, here, uh, but yet now I can't um, undo to get it back to what it was. So what I wanted to show you is that um, now you see that the forward link, it understands, I mean, we've called this flink, but it, under, it understands actually the structure type that this is referring to, so it knows that it is in fact the DLL base. And so what you can also do, particularly with the pseudocode, is if you go to this variable, or any variable for that matter, we can set the type. And oftentimes as we're kind of grooming and, and refining our database, we want to reset those types appropriately. So here we can say set LVAR type, 
And you'll notice that in this case, it is correct. This is in fact a pointer to an LDR data table entry item. So that's why when that is correct, Ida understands the structure that it's pointing to and that that member that we updated here is in fact the DLL base. Right. Very similar with some of these others. Um, this in load order module list, for example, we could look at that and see, well, yeah, that is in fact pointing to a list entry item, right? And so that is correct. And by making sure that the types are correct as we're you know, working either in the pseudocode or the disassembly or both, that can significantly improve uh, the output of the code they're analyzing. Okay, so we've gotten through the PEB, the process environment block, quite a bit there to digest. If you want to spend some time analyzing the code, be it just to help make things concrete, definitely recommend that. I'm going to pause this, uh, I will actually stop this video, and then we're going to pick up here in the next video and talk about why that's so jumpy. Um, talk about now, what do we do once we resolve the base of a DLL?